So, you know, there's a very interesting dynamic uh, in Jacob's life that I want to talk to you about for a moment because the principle uh, is profound as it relates to how God builds us uh, through frustration, through brokenness, or through the entanglements in our lives. So if you know Jacob's story, you'll you'll remember that when he is going to his uncle Laban's house, he gets close to Laban's property and he comes to a well where he meets his cousin Rachel. And the scripture tells us that Jacob, man, it was love in first sight. Jacob loved Rachel. He was all in for her. She's the youngest sister, though, because she's got an older sister, the firstborn, named Leah. And uh, Rachel is everything that stoked the fire of hope, dream, passion, love, uh, and purpose in Jacob. Leah, on the other hand, was the exact opposite of Rachel. If you know the story, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, I encourage you to get in the book of Genesis and take a look at that. Some very fascinating dynamics. But the story goes like this. Jacob is so in love with Rachel that he makes a covenant with her father Laban and says, I'll work for you for seven years for the right to marry Rachel. Laban agrees. They enter into a covenant. And lo and behold, Laban tricks Jacob. And instead of giving him Rachel, he gives him Leah. Jacob now is entangled with Leah. The scripture describes Leah as being weak-eyed. Uh, that is a twofold definition. Number one, it meant, it meant she wasn't nearly as attractive to Jacob as Rachel was on a physical, romantic level. Additionally, it speaks to the fact that Rachel had some weaknesses and some vulnerabilities in her life. The scriptures don't go into the great detail of what those are, but needless to say, Jacob was now entangled with Leah. And the, the story goes that Jacob despised Leah, but loved Rachel. And you know, there are things in our lives that we love, and there are things in our lives that we are either entangled with, or they're just part of our journey, that they're the Leahs of our journey. Uh, we don't care for it. We don't love it. We don't like this situation. We're not crazy about the scenario, but we're entangled with it. And by entangled, I mean there's an issue you can't just walk away from. It's just not that simple. But the power of the story and the principle that I want to talk about today is this. It was the frustration and struggle that Jacob had with the Leah in his life that birthed the most sons in his life. Jacob has 12 sons. Leah births six. Rachel only births two. And then you find that the, the young women who were maids that were given as basically personal assistants in that culture is not, not how we do things now, uh, but they were given Zopa was the name of the young lady that was given to Leah by her dad. And then Bilha was Rachel's uh, maid or personal assistant. And when Leah and Rachel couldn't bear children, they would give Zopa or Bilha to uh, bear children on their behalf. So as a result of Leah and Zilpah, her, her maid, is, is a surrogate, type of a surrogate for Leah, eight of Jacob's 12 sons come from his entanglement with Leah. The point I want to leave with you today is simply this. God's got a way of working through the Leahs in our life, the entanglements, the disappointments, the uh, frustrations and struggles that we have to build us. Eight out of the 12 sons of Jacob came from Leah, not Rachel. That is profound because it tells us that when God is building us, when we're on our journey to purpose, when we're on our journey of faith, when we're doing life and we are all in as covenant people of God, that God has a way of taking those things that even if he doesn't send them, he works through them to facilitate our purposes. 
and his purposes with us. So what I want to encourage you with is that no doubt there are uh, some situations in your life, uh, or let me put it this way. There's a situation in your life that is very much like Leah. You see, Leah and Rachel don't speak to either or, they're and and both. It's the bitter and the sweet side by side. It's the passion and the pain that coexist. There is a tension on the journey of purpose. There's a tension on the journey of faith where there are entanglements, but there's also empowerment. And that's where I want to challenge you to focus today. When you look at the entanglements or the disappointments or the frustrations, I, I challenge you. In fact, I, you know, I even want to dare you to look and expect God to build you, to empower you in the entanglement. Maybe there's a situation in your situation today that uh, you're struggling with or wrestling against and it's exhausting you. Maybe you're worn out. Maybe you're frustrated. I'm telling you today, God's got a way that even if he didn't send that thing, that situation, even if it didn't come from him, he can still work through it to multiply and increase you. There's a very powerful principle in the covenant people of God. We see it in Israel's journey when they're in Egyptian captivity. Captivity, And it's this, the book said that as Pharaoh afflicted them, he tried to oppress them. And the more he attempted to oppress them, the more they multiplied and increased. Laban, Jacob's father-in-law, deceived Jacob. He broke covenant with him. He, that's a type of oppression and limitation and entanglement. But in the entanglement, God works through it to activate and release the release factor, the multiplication dimension in your life. So before I go, let me conclude with this. Somewhere in your entanglement, God is working to release empowerment. And though every one of us have Leah's that we would rather not have to deal with, God's got a way of redeeming those scenarios and making them multiply and bless us. At some point on your journey of purpose and faith, you're going to look back and see that God worked through the Leah in your life or the Leah's in your life to empower you, to equip you, and to advance you. And what the enemy meant to entangle with you with, God's going to enlarge you greatly. So, you may be struggling with Aaliyah, passionate about your Rachel. God's got a way of working through that tension to bring your destiny into manifestation.